How frustrating it will be if after studying microscope for several hours you are asked about a particular type that you never heard of. Stay with me for the next 10 minutes and I can assure you that you do not have to face such a heartbreaking situation again. Hello and welcome to our channel Stories in Biology. Please do subscribe to our channel to stay updated for more interesting stories from the world of biology. So let's carry on with today's topic, types of microscope or classification of microscope. Microscopes may be grouped in different ways. One type of grouping is based on what interacts with the sample to generate the image. Is it white light or any other form of wave or any probe? In the last part of this video, we will see that microscopes, depending on their imaging technique, can also be classified in three types. Microscopes operated through transmission technique, through scanning technique or by the fluorescence technique. But let us first discuss the primary way of grouping based on what interacts with the sample. As told earlier, there may be three ways, either by sending a spectrum from electromagnetic radiation like visible light or UV ray or X-ray. Or it may be any other kind of wave like a beam of electrons or a sound wave. Or by scanning from a short distance by using a physical probe. As we know that electromagnetic radiation is a form of energy that is all around us and it includes many forms from gamma rays, x-rays to radio waves. But visible light ranging from 390 nanometer to 700 nanometer of the spectrum is only a small portion of the electromagnetic radiation and is the only one that our eyes are sensitive to. Microscopes where visible light of electromagnetic radiation is used to illuminate the sample are known as optical microscopes or light microscopes. All optical microscopes may again be divided into two types depending on the technique we use to enhance the contrast of the image. And they are the bright field technology and the dark field technology. We have a video on bright field and dark field microscopy. You can watch it by tapping the eye icon at the top right hand corner of the screen. We know that bright field is the conventional technique where specimen is lit from below and refracted as well as unrefracted rays from the sample will take part in image formation resulting into the formation of a dark image of the specimen. There are several types of bright field optical microscopes and we may group them all under five categories and and the first one of them is the simple light microscope generally it is considered to be the first microscope and is actually the simplest of all microscopes it uses a single lens to magnify an object and functions as a magnifying glass so it has got a limited magnification of 10x to 20x the second category of bright field optical microscope is the most popular microscope. It is well known, the compound light microscope, which uses two sets of lenses, an objective lens and an eyepiece lens, to produce an image and can provide a maximum magnification up to 1000x. These microscopes are widely used in schools and college labs for viewing cells on slides that are not visible to naked eyes. By simple modification in illumination technique, we can easily convert these microscopes into dark field microscopes or in polarizing microscopes. Compound optical microscopes can be further divided into three subcategories depending on the number of viewing heads they have. The one with only single eyepiece or viewing head is known as the monocular compound light microscope. Likewise, with two eyepiece lenses, which proves to be more comfortable for general viewing, is known as binocular compound light microscope. And the trinocular compound light microscope, which contains a third eyepiece tube that can be used by another person simultaneously, or we can attach a CCD camera here. Next, the third type of bright field optical microscope is the stereo microscope also known as the dissecting microscope. It has got two optical paths at slightly different angles and thus provide a close-up and a 3D view of the object surface. 
although it provides a low magnification generally below 100x and used for comparatively large specimens that you could be able to hold with your hand the fourth type is the digital microscope it uses the power of a computer to view objects as told earlier if we add a digital CCD camera connected to a computer via USB cable to a trinocular compound microscope, it will become a digital microscope. You can take a note that the technique of capturing image through the microscope is known as photomicrography and the image is known as micrograph. The last type of bright field optical microscope is portable or movable and is known as pocket microscope. It is used for handheld imaging of a variety of specimens in the field or in the laboratory. Lots of varieties of uh, pocket microscopes have been invented so far, having varied price range to power magnification. The most inexpensive one is the fold scope, developed by young Indian scientist Manu Prakash. It can be made from simple components like a sheet of paper and a lens and aims to make cheap and easy tools available for scientific users in the developing world. Till now we were talking about optical microscopes operated through conventional bright field technology. Now it's time to mention the advanced technique of enhancing contrast in an image. The dark field technique. As we know that in dark field technique an opaque stop is used to before the condenser lens so that the specimen does not receive direct illumination from below and receives the illumination from sides by the oblique rays. It will result into the formation of a bright image of the sample as only refracted rays by the sample takes part in image formation. As told earlier, the compound light microscopes can easily be converted into a dark field microscope by using a dark field stop. Besides this, some microscopes have been developed especially following the dark field technology and they are phase contrast microscope and the differential interference contrast microscope or DICM. Both of these are complementary techniques capable of producing high contrast image of uh, transparent biological specimens. A phase contrast microscope works by converting the phase shifts of light passing through a transparent specimen to detectable brightness changes in the image. It uses annular diaphragm and a phase plate to create contrast. Differential interference contrast microscope or DICM on the other hand uses more sophisticated contrast enhancing technique than the phase contrast microscope. DICM works by the detection of continuous changes in refraction. This microscope is used to observe minute surface irregularities but at a higher resolution. Pseudo three-dimensional shadow cast image is formed in DICM. The next two types of optical microscopes that I am about to mention here do not use visible light as it is but uses modified form of visible light like uh, polarized light and uh, laser light. By using a polarizing plate and an analyzer it is possible to transform the unpolarized light into polarized light that is transforming light waves vibrating in more than one plane into waves which vibrates into a single plane. As mentioned earlier using polarized light into a compound light microscope we can convert it into a polarized microscope. Specimens of anisotropic character are only visible when illuminated with uh, polarized light. Polarized microscopes are used extensively in optical mineralogy for investigating crystalline structures. Next type of microscope is confocal microscopes, better known as Confocal laser scanning optical microscope or CSOM. Here dyed samples are scanned by laser lights instead of regular light which with the aid of a dichromatic mirror. CSOM can capture multiple 2D images at different depths in a sample. And the operator can create a 3D image as well by assembling those multiple scans. This type of microscopes are commonly used in biological and medical research. Multiphoton excitation microscope or MPE is an advanced confocal microscope. 
the use of multiple laser reduces damage to cells and allows high resolution observation of deep areas of the sample. This type of microscope is used to observe nerve cells and blood flow in the brain. Now, last two types of optical microscope which do not use visible spectrum of electromagnetic radiation. Rather, radiation of shorter wavelengths like X-ray, UV ray are used in these microscopes. The first one of them is the fluorescent microscope. As the name suggests, these microscopes are capable of observing fluorescence emitted by the samples. Actually, fluorescence is the emission of light by a substance like sodium iodine that has absorbed light or other electromagnetic radiation. Specimens stained with fluorochromes are exposed to ultraviolet, violet or blue light radiations and forms an image of the object with the resulting fluorescent light. The fluorescent microscope has become an essential tool in medical biology. A variant of fluorescent microscope is the Total Internal Reflection Fluorescence Microscope or TIRFM. It is a type of microscope with which a thin resin of a specimen usually less than 200 nanometers can be observed. The last type of microscope under the head of sharing electromagnetic radiation is the X-ray microscope which uses soft X-ray bands of uh, electromagnetic radiation to produce image. Because X-rays can penetrate uh, matter efficiently, they can be used to view internal structures of uh, opaque specimens such as uh, rocks, bones, etc. And it can handle any kind of specimen. X-ray microscope can achieve higher optical resolution up to 20 nanometers. Now let's come to the second type of microscopes where other waveforms like a beam of electrons or sound waves are used instead of electromagnetic waves to illuminate the sample. The microscopes where electron beam are used to illuminate the sample are known as electron microscope. Electron microscope uses electromagnetic coils instead of glass lenses to focus the electron beam. Several types of electron microscopes have been developed so far to help investigate different aspects of a sample and uh, these are the transmission electron microscope or TIM, the scanning electron microscope or SIM and uh, the reflection electron microscope or REM. Let's look at TIM. It is the original electron microscope. In a TIM, a beam of electron hits a very thin sample. The electrons are transmitted through the sample and then the transmitted electrons hits a fluorescent screen that forms an image. Whereas in case of a SEM, a beam of electrons scans the surface of a sample. The interaction of electrons with the material triggers the emission of uh, secondary electrons. These secondary electrons are captured by a detector which forms an image of the surface of the sample. A REM or reflection electron microscope is used to study the microscopic surface structure and the composition of crystals. Here, in REM, a narrow beam of electron is refracted from the first few atomic layers of the crystal at high resolution. It combines with spectroscopy to form the image. Now, let's talk about acoustic microscopes where sound waves are used to form image. It employs a very high or ultra high frequency ultrasound and uh, these microscopes operate non-destructively and uh, penetrate most solid materials to make a visible image of internal features including defects such as cracks. At least two basic types of acoustic microscopes have been developed and uh, these are scanning acoustic microscope or SAM and the confocal scanning acoustic microscope or CSAM. Now, let's move to the third category of microscopes, the scanning probes or SPMs, where physical probes are used to scan the surface at the nanoscale level. The probe tip is mounted on a flexible cantilever allowing the tip to follow the object surface and an electrical potential difference is applied between the tip of the probe and the sample. The first type of 
स्कैनिंग प्रोब माइक्रोस्कोप और एस पी एम इज द स्कैनिंग टनलिंग माइक्रोस्कोप और एस टी एम एस टी एम मेजर द इलेक्ट्रिकल करेंट बिटवीन द टीप ऑफ द प्रोब एंड द स्पेसिफन सो एस टी एम कैन ओनली बी ऑपरेटेड ऑन सैम्पल्स ऑफ कंडक्टिव और सेमी कंडक्टिव इन नेचर दिस लिमिटेशन ऑफ एस टी एम ड्रोव द इन्वेंशन ऑफ द सेकेंड कैटेगरी ऑफ एस पी एम द एटोमिक फोर्स माइक्रोस्कोप और ए एफ एम where there is no requirement for the samples to be conductive it works by measuring the electrostatic force between the tip of the probe and the specimen there is another kind of spm known as thermal scanning microscope as told earlier microscopes can also be classified based on the imaging technique like uh, whether it analyzes the sample at once by transmitting through the sample known as the transmission technique or analyze the sample by scanning across parts of the surface via scanning point or a probe or by fluorescence based technique where light is re-emitted from the sample due to the interaction with light as in case of fluorescence microscope for your convenience i have marked all the microscope operated through transmission technique by black arrow mark and uh, apart from these and fluorescent microscope the rest of the microscopes are scanning microscopes hope this makes sense to you Hope you liked the video please do subscribe to our channel stories in biology thank you thanks for being with me